All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Good afternoon. Some of you I've met. Uh, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you, Mark. Uh, my name's Chris Brenchley. I'm the Vice President for Product Management here at PetraSkills. And before I get started, we're going to talk today about just-in-time performance support uh, and a new offering from PetraSkills called PetraCore Reference. Um, but before I get started, I know you all are familiar with PetraSkills. Are you familiar with PetraSkills as well? Very simply uh, put, PetraSkills is a technology training and knowledge transfer company. Uh, we've been delivering training courses to the industry for about 50 years now. And we currently have about 200 course titles. We deliver primarily via classroom training uh, uh, in uh, both ENP, facilities engineering, and in the health safety and environment. And uh, again, one of the things we're doing here at the show is focusing on new ways that we're leveraging technology, namely the internet in this case, to take our technical knowledge and intellectual property and benefit the industry in new ways outside of the classroom. And uh, the other thing that's unique is the PetraSkills Alliance uh, is essentially uh, an alliance of about 23 companies in the industry that we partner with to develop and maintain our curriculum, so all the materials that are used in the delivery of our classroom training courses, as well as the competency map framework and the skills maps uh, that help us identify what training should cover. All of that is done through the PetraSkills Alliance model. Okay? So we're not just a, a content company that's creating this because we think this is what the industry needs. We work closely with the industry to have them tell us what they need. And in fact, their uh, technical subject matter experts actually help us develop that curriculum. Okay? So before I get into PetraCore reference, just wanted to share some industry trends with you. We host an annual conclave for all of our Alliance member partners. We typically have about three or 400 attendees uh, from both the learning and development and training organizations as well as uh, some of the technical functions. And these are some of the thoughts that came out from those Alliance members uh, at our keynote uh, address in Galveston earlier this year. And without going through them all, you can see a lot of it was focused on how do we get technical knowledge into the hands of the technical professional when and when, when and where they're doing their work, you know, to ensure that we can accelerate their, their time to competency and make sure they can do their work autonomously, drive reduction in error, and all these other uh, business drivers. So this sort of sets the table for PetraCore reference and really echoes why we chose to move in this direction to begin with. So simply put, when you think about PetraCore reference, it's a competency-based technical e reference solution. And we've designed it to let petro, uh, petroleum technical professionals uh, easily access and quickly find the PetraSkills technical knowledge that will help them do their jobs more effectively. Um, and again, getting it out of the classroom into the work, workflow is something that's really important for this product. So we spent the last, really about 18 months now, converting our uh, course material library. So all the course manuals, textbooks, images, animations, exercises, Anything that we use to deliver the, the course itself uh, is made available in this solution. Uh, and again, the key aspect here is it's not just about the technology and the fact that we're creating the C-reference model um, uh, for the industry, but that the content itself is curated, it's accurate, it's credible, uh, and it's relevant to the industry. And that's not something you'll find in other sort of more public search engines or content that's just generally available on the internet. We've also designed the solution so that it really pushes that knowledge out to the edge of the workforce. So it's not just about delivering the knowledge to a laptop like the one behind me, but it's delivering it down to a tablet device like an iPad or a Microsoft Surface tablet, uh, for example. And the way we've designed Petra uh, Core Reference is to do it in a browser-based fashion. So there's no plugins, no client applications, nothing you need to download and install. That helps us to deliver the experience within company networks where a lot of security policies lock down applications. Uh, but it also ensures that we can work on a multitude of devices. Uh, again, because we're just playing through that browser. The other thing that I'll show you rather than talk a lot about is in addition to making this material available in a digital format, we're also uh, tagging all the content objects, so images, sections within pages, and all the other materials to skills within our competency map framework. So what that means is that through the solution, there's just another way to access the content and find what you're looking for. Whether you're a, uh, an engineer just trying to do uh, your job, or you're a coach or a mentor 
who's trying to assemble a body of knowledge around a skill or a task you're trying to train uh, your mentees on. Okay, and I'll show you how that works when you're in the system. And again, well, we come at it uh, uh, from the perspective that you know how you learn information is very different than how you use it. We all experience that in our daily lives and the jobs we work. Uh, but it's a key sort of philosophical element uh, here, and it's really what separates e-reference from e-learning. And so, just some thoughts on this. When you take a look at sort of uh, technical e-reference, we see the main difference between technical e-reference and e-learning is e-learning is still a structured learning experience. It's not in a classroom, per se. It's not instructor-led, but there's learning objectives. You're moving through a sequenced sort of guided learning experience. Typically, there's an assessment on the back end, but it's a structured learning experience. When you take a look at technical e-reference, uh, it's really designed to support uh, everything from that kind of formal experience, whether you're in a classroom setting or you're taking an e-learning course, uh, where e-reference may serve as pre- or post-work. Uh, in a classroom setting, we're finding companies that are interested in using this kind of material in the classroom setting. So it's the shift from having a printed course manual in front of you to an iPad with digital materials, that kind of thing. And again, the mitigation of retention loss is another key uh, aspect to e-reference, which is, you know, I take a class on anything, we've all experienced this, and six months later, I need to recall that knowledge and put it to use. Chances are, I've either forgotten that information or I'm not that confident in it. Come on in, join us, thank you. And um, technically, reference can help mitigate that, that retention loss. Again, we've designed the entire experience so you can very quickly get at the nugget of technical knowledge that you need to address your query, the work you're doing, etc. As I referenced, uh, we see a lot of opportunity for e-reference and coaching and mentoring support. How can companies allow or provide their coaches and mentors, their senior technical folks, with a body of knowledge that they can use to train their junior technicians, whether they're for, uh, new graduates or early career professionals? And then lastly, at the individual, you know, again, this is very simply, the analogy is sort of like shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, I could go search Google for all this te technical information. I'll get tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of results, even for some of the uh, search queries that you might expect to get a small result set. You get a ton of information. That takes time and experience <coughs> to go through that list of results to understand what good is. What we're trying to do with Petrichor Reference is leverage our subject matter experts, leverage the alliance, and curate that knowledge and ensure that what you're getting is relevant to the industry, it's timely and exact. So when you think about this, and I'll go quickly through the numbers here, but it's kind of important. It's like, well, so, so what? Okay, so now we're providing a better way for people to find information. What does that mean in terms of business impact? And so one of the things we started looking at was uh, productivity costs of inefficient uh, sort of knowledge hunting, if you will, or finding information. And there have been studies done within the industry where uh, they found that upwards of 40% uh, of a technical professional's time is spent looking for information. Not all of it falls into this sort of technical knowledge category, but let's assume half of it does, or even 10% of it does. Those numbers add up pretty quickly across uh, even a modest technical approach. Okay, so if you're looking at the time lost or the productivity cost of people spending time looking for information versus doing work and adding value to the organization, that can add up pretty significantly. Same goes for the coaches and mentors, the senior guys that you're, and gals that you're paying more money to, taking some of their time to mentor, again, the junior technologists, that time spent adds up to they're not doing the rest of their work and uh, again, adds up pretty quickly to some pretty significant dollars. So even if this case is off by 10x, it's still a fair amount of money um, within a technical enterprise that uh, is impacting the organization. And that's particularly acute for smaller operators, smaller organizations. And again, that doesn't even factor in the upside associated with, okay, if I'm not spending time looking for the right information, I could be doing other things that add more value. There's a cost benefit to that. And the reduction in error, or faster resolution of errors that occur, uh, and incidents that occur, obviously has a financial impact to the organization as well. So these are some of the ways we're trying to, as we launch this offering, work with our pilot customers, really start to quantify the business benefit and the value of technically reference. Okay?
So any questions before we go into the demo? Does this stuff resonate? Is this stuff that you're finding? Uh, Mark, any sort of questions or observations? Good. Makes sense? Okay, good. We talked a little bit earlier, so I know you guys are on the bus. So, all right, well, let's just take a quick look. I'm going to have my lovely assistant, Dawn, help me out because for some reason I keep creating problems with that speaker. Um, but, oh, sorry, if you just pop back to that PowerPoint. Uh, I think it's this one. Uh, yeah, that, that's the one. Yeah, let me go one more slide if you could project that one. There you go. Awesome. So let's take a look at sort of this case. I'm going to dangerously get close to this speaker again. Um, let's take a case of Bob. He's a junior drilling engineer. And again, this is a very simple example. But let's just say that he's first time he's planning his new well project. He took a course, you know, six, nine months ago, but some time ago. And now he's planning his first project. Okay? He learned something in that class about internal diameter, internal drift diameter. He knows you know, there's some connection between that and the casing selection that I need to make uh, relative to proper fit clearance, but God, I'm not 100%, he's not 100% sure what it is. He has mentoring support, but they're not always there. They're doing their day job. They don't want to talk to him or deal with them. So where does he go? How does he, how does he sort of confirm his technical knowledge in an autonomous fashion, an independent fashion? Moreover, what's the value in time and money of a stuck drill bit or the delay in such a project as Bob's trying to figure out what he knows? So when we go ahead and take a look at how we might solve this very simple example, leveraging any reference experience, now Don will come in and help me out. <laughs> Sorry, that was my fault. So if Don, if I could just have you up in the search box, just type internal drift diameter. And that's Bob. He's got a cool hat on. You'll see basically what Petrofor Reference is going to do is search across the body of technical knowledge that we have within the PetroSkills technical library and it only brings back seven results. Okay, not a lot of stuff, but it's all highly relevant to this particular question or this issue. So if you click on this one at the bottom actually, Don, just because it's the one I read and I know how to demo. But it's actually very applicable here. If you could just you can drag that note out of it. So simply this will bring up a page from our casing and cement. No you have to delete it, just cancel and then move it out of the way. Just drag there it. There you go. So essentially, this will not only answer Bob's question about what, what's the difference between internal drift diameter and internal diameter, but also give him a case history around, well, what's, what, what happens when you do it wrong? Okay, so very simple example, but it's a way to really provide that targeted snippet of information that addresses the project that Bob's working on. And you can imagine that playing out in a variety of disciplines at a variety of levels. Uh, but again, this isn't taking a course or doing some e-learning. This is, I just need this information now I have this question I don't know the answer to. If you could, Dawn, go back to PetroCore Home at the top left. And I know we didn't practice this, sorry. You're doing awesome. Because it's such an easy to use tool, actually. And there's a lot of other features in here around bookmarking and note taking and all that kind of stuff. I'm happy to walk you through that. I'm not going to do that right now. But the other thing I wanted to share with you, if you take a look at uh, Dawn, if you could just hit view under reference for drilling engineer. One of the things, uh, as I said earlier, we do is we're mapping this content to our competency map. So if you click on well construction, and because Bob's a drilling engineer, that's the discipline that he has access to. We can configure that based on any sort of role, any part of the value chain, it's very flexible. But now you can go through and browse the various skill groups and skills and access content that way. So if you click on casing and cementing planning, it's about midway through. Sorry, Don. Yeah. And then at the bottom there, wellhead casing and liner design and selection. We've now constrained the content that's in the library down to uh, that uh, content that's tied to them. And we're continuing to tag that uh, as, as we move through the library. What's important about this is as you think about coaches and mentors that are trying to uh, develop the junior professionals, this tool and this capability allows those senior folks to really build that reading list that I referred to earlier. Quickly show me all the materials you have on this particular skill, at this particular level of mastery, and let me go create essentially a reading list to do this. This is kind of advanced, so I'm going to do it. I'm kidding, of course. Um, but if we go in here, if I go in and essentially export notes I've made throughout the material, and I had annotated those notes earlier in the interest of 
time is I can actually create a reading list uh, export that's in PDF that I can actually, as a mentor, send around to the technical professionals I'm trying to develop. And in this case, the note's a little silly. This is important. That's not very useful. But this could say something like, this is why this is important to this company's project, this project, this operation, etc. And then as I, the mentor, send that file out to those that I'm trying to develop, they can then just click on that link. And again, it would presume that they have access to PetraCore, but they would come in and get access to that material. Okay, so this is the way we're, we're really starting to think about how can we make our technical knowledge relevant outside of the classroom, solve this just-in-time performance support solution challenge or opportunity, how can we help you all take advantage of that, um, and again, the one other thing that I would leave you with is that while we started with our own course materials, sort of as the nucleus within this framework, we've actually designed it so that we can pull in content from third-party providers. So as we move forward into 2013, one of the things we're focusing on is what other content uh, is appropriate to pull into this framework. Textbooks, reference manuals, technical bulletins, uh, and we're having those conversations now with content partners. So all that gets wrapped up into this skills-based framework uh, to provide that kind of just-in-time performance support. So that's really all I had for this morning was just sort of afternoon, just a quick sort of 10, 15 minutes to blast through Petricore reference. Any questions, comments? Does it seem amazing or are you just at least you're rested? Yeah? See see some value in it? Yeah, sure. Yes. Oh, great question. That's a great question. I'm kind of I'll pay you the twenty dollars later. But um, the one of the other things that I should have referenced and I didn't is the fact that this framework can also support proprietary materials. The way the um, content management and the permissions work, we can segregate what content is shown to whom. And um, uh, so, so the short answer is yes. The system's been designed to do that. From a content management standpoint, we're evolving those tool sets so that I can give you that tool to manage it. Today, you'd have to come to us and say, we want to put this stuff in here. Tomorrow, you get to drive the bus yourself. And that's exactly where we're going. So then you can have your proprietary content side by side, uh, our material. Uh, great question. Anything else? Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, I appreciate your time today. We'll be here tomorrow, too. If you want a uh, deeper discussion or demo of Petrichor reference, we're happy to do that. Tell a friend. Come back. We have some freebie stuff. Make sure you leave a business card with Dawn if you haven't already. And um, anyway, enjoy the rest of the show.